Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Eliza of Eliza Doodles, if you don't know me. I'm an independent illustrator in the New Jersey, New York area. Today I'll be doing a 2022 artist holiday gift guide for you all, because I don't know about you, but sometimes I find it kind of hard to shop for my friends who are artists. So I sat down and I thought really hard and came up with some good ideas. So everything that's on this list I either already have or I've done research on and want really bad. I've organized everything by price, so I'll be starting from the lowest price and working my way up to the more expensive items. There's a variety of options for everyone. So getting into it, I'm starting off with stationery and all things that are cute. I'm gonna preface this section with saying, I have linked a list of small artists below in the description where you can find all of these items. I can't guarantee that their shops are still open because it's getting really close to the holidays, but if their shops aren't open and you're interested, I guarantee you can find all of these things on Etsy. So let's get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna say is stickers. I love stickers. I personally don't know any artist that doesn't love stickers. It's a cute gift for any artist in your life. It's very affordable. Most stickers tend to range from $2 to $6, depending on the size and quality. Every single independent artist I've listed below sells stickers. And like I said, if their shop is closed, you can find so many cute stickers on Etsy. The next items are sticky notes and notepads. I personally always use sticky notes, whether I'm just like jotting down something or sketching down something on a piece of paper. All artists would like some cute stationery. I got these in Chinatown in Las Vegas. I paid $3 for this, $5 for this, and some of the artists I linked below have bigger notepads that are about like dollars all great options I think any artist would like some cute stationery um, for the next option I have washi tape washi tape can be priced anywhere from three or four dollars to around eight dollars I know independent artists tend to price their washi tapes for about eight dollars I personally would shop small if I were you I think the eight dollars is worth it for the really cute washi tape the next option I have are really cute acrylic keychains. So these have been popular in the art world recently. This is a keychain of a cat drinking boba by Studio Maggie. I got it because it looks like my cat Bob and I love it a lot. These typically tend to range from $8 to $10. They're really cute. They're really adorable. I personally have like anxiety with scratching nice things so I don't use mine. I just kind of like use it for decor. I keep it up in my room, but these are really cute, a great option for anyone. The next option I have is enamel pins. Enamel pins are a great accessory for anyone. I've seen people put them on their backpacks, people put them on their jackets. I like to keep mine up in my room. I think my favorite enamel pins I have are from this brand called Tender Ghost. They just have really cute, funny, witty, wholesome enamel pins. I really think there's one for everyone. Uh, you should check it out. The last option I have under stationery is art prints. Art prints can go anywhere from $7 to $20 plus depending on what type of art print it is. Like, I, I'm gonna say this a million times, but all of the artists I have linked below are selling incredible art prints. Please go check them out, they're so talented. You can also find some really cool art prints on Etsy. Say you have a friend who loves Twin Peaks, if you go on Etsy and look up Twin Peaks art print, I guarantee you'll have a bunch of options that you can customize towards what your artist friend likes. Moving on to the next section, this is the tchotchkes section. This section is not for your minimalist art friend. This is definitely for your maximalist art friend who loves having things everywhere and cute stuff. I am one of those people, so here is the list of things. I'd say the first option, which is a fun gift, would be those mini mystery figurine boxes. My two personal favorites are the Sunny Angel brand. They typically tend to go for $11 if you buy them in store, but it's a bit more pricey online. I also really like the Smisky figurines. They typically go for $9 in store, but again, they're a little bit more pricey if you were to buy them online. The next option is this cute little mushroom vacuum. 
It serves as cute decor as well as being a really functional vacuum. If I have eraser shavings, I just and it sucks it all up. It's great. This goes for about $13, and if you don't like red, I believe it comes in green and blue as well. The next option would be to get a cute plant if you know your artist friend likes plants. I personally love plants. I have a million plants everywhere. I would say go with a pothos plant. They don't need to be watered too often. They thrive in low light, and I swear to God, these are like the most impossible plant to kill. It's honestly a good gift for anyone if they like plants. You know, if you have a friend who typically kills plants and wants one, this would be a good idea. You know, it just adds some green to your space, adds a little bit of life to the space. It's just, it's a nice touch. Both those plants, depending on where you buy them, can go anywhere between like $7 and $15. I found some really nice ones at Walmart before for like seven or eight dollars that are like, you know, smaller and the same ones at Lowe's were a little bit more expensive but both are good options. The last option I have for this section is these cute little pastel storage crates that are collapsible. I honestly think these are good for anyone. If you have a friend who has a bunch of stickers, they have a bunch of notepads, they just have a bunch of stuff everywhere. It's just a nice and cute way to organize the things you already have. I personally want them really bad. I have a bunch of stuff all over my shelf that has nowhere to go, so it's just simply sitting there and would be nice to have some cute crates to put in. <laughs> Moving on to the next section, we're going to be talking about pens and writing utensils. The first thing I have on this list is this Jelly Roll White Gel Pen. I think every artist should have one of these. Since I started my art career, I've had one of these. It's great for adding detail. It's just I don't know. Ask any artist, they're like, oh, I love my white gel pen. Like, you don't know you need it until you have one. And then you're like, oh, wait, I love this thing. If you were to buy this online, it is ridiculously expensive. But if you buy it in store at Michael's, it is $2. The next pens I'm going to be talking about in this section are Pentel brush tip pens. I love these. The pigment's great. They're beautiful. The outside of them has this really pretty detailed sparkle. They just feel really good to write with and draw with. If you were to buy one of these by themselves online, it's about $5, but if you buy a whole pack, it's about $20. I would say the pack is definitely a better deal because you get like eight pens for $20 instead of one for five. The next writing utensil on my list is a black gel pen. I know a bunch of people have different opinions, but my favorite is the Muji pen. I've been using these since high school. They're reliable. The tip isn't temperamental. It's never given me a problem. These pens last forever. Like their inkwells are huge. It's great. You can get a pack of four or five of these online for about $12. So if you were looking to get a gift for your friend who likes to sketch a lot, I would get them a pack of Muji pens. The last item I have on this list of writing utensils is Posca markers. I I love these so much. I've been using them since the beginning of my art career. They're easy to use, they're fun, they're great for layering all around. It's just a great product and they last for a really long time. The first pack of these I had lasted for almost two years, which is insane. You can get a pack of five of these online for I believe about $18 with tax. Overall, just a great product. I would get these for any one of my friends who's an artist. <laughs> Those are all of the utensils that I frequently use in my sketchbook that I trust. And speaking of sketchbooks, we're going to move on to our next section, which is sketchbooks. I think a sketchbook is a really personal gift to give someone. However, if you were going to get them one, I would go with this one. This is my favorite sketchbook of all time. It is the Speedball Handbook. I'm going to read a description of it. It's a heavyweight 130 GSM paper, it has 64 sheets, 128 pages. Uh, it's a durable cover with an elastic enclosure. And if you're not a fan of the square shape of the sketchbook itself, it's available in six formats. A pocket portrait, a pocket landscape, 
square, large portrait, large landscape, and grand portrait. So you have so many options. This one is five and a half by five and a half inches. I like it because it's really portable. It's easy to bring places. Like this fits in every purse or bag I have. It holds different mediums really well. It can hold anything from inks to paints, from pencils to pens. This sketchbook itself is $11, which is a great deal in my opinion. But overall, this sketchbook is amazing. And the next sketchbook I'm going to suggest is one that I want to try really badly, but I have not yet. I have to say, I think this is the trendiest sketchbook out there right now. Every artist that I know with an online presence has one. It is the Nina Crosford, Nina Cosford, I think? Nina Cosford sketchbook. It has 80 pages, smooth, plain, off-white, 100 GSM paper, acid-free and sustainably sourced, has rounded corners, stitch bound so it opens flat, soft back vegan leather cover. It has extra features including a ribbon bookmark, an expandable back pocket, and a bright red band of elastic to keep it tidy when closed, and it's about 7 by 8 inches. The only downside to this is if you're a painter, the sketchbook is not wet medium friendly. It's basically a sketchbook that is just for sketching with pencil and pen. However, I still want to try it. Everyone I know that has one loves it and it's gotten great reviews. The Nina Crosford sketchbook is $16, so it's a really affordable sketchbook. That concludes our sketchbook section and now we are moving on to the very brief crochet section. I like to crochet, that is my hobby in my free time, so here are just a few things. The first item I have listed is a set of ergonomic crochet hooks. It's these crochet hooks, instead of it just being a straight stick, it has a nice handle, it's really easy on the wrist, it makes crocheting on bigger projects easier because if you have to crochet for a long time, it helps your wrist a lot. I personally enjoy these prim crochet hooks. I bought this one by itself for $7, and then I found out that there's a pack of five for $20, so I would now go with the pack of five for $20. I didn't say this before, but everything that I'm talking about in this video, I will have linked in the description below so you can find it. I have this crochet hook set listed. I also included a second one that has metal hooks instead of plastic because I know some people prefer metal. The prim set is about $20 and the metal hook set is about $12. The second and last thing I have listed on the crochet list is the softest yarn ever. I've seen a bunch of people reviewing this yarn and they're like, oh my goodness, this is so soft and I really wanna try it out. It's called the Lana Grossa Lala Berlin Cloudy Yarn. It's about $13 per skein. I don't know how many yards it is, but I included the link below, so if you're interested, you can check it out. I was looking through their website. They have a bunch of different colors in this type of yarn. It looks awesome. So if you're into crocheting, I would really check it out. The next section I have is tote bags. So the reason I would include a tote bag on a gift list for artists is because I always am traveling with a sketchbook, I'm traveling with an iPad, I'm traveling with a pencil case full of pens and pencils and a bunch of art crafts. So having a bag to hold all of that is nice, especially if you can have a bag that is dedicated to just holding your art products is really cool. The example tote bag I have is this beautiful one by Radia Rahman. Her, she goes by Knives Meow online. It's, it's huge, it's durable, the design is beautiful, and this is about $30. Tote bags typically tend to price between $20 and $30. There's also another artist that goes by Studio Maggie that has really cute tote bags made by the same maker as well. Those are both already linked below if you want to go check them out. The second item I have listed under totes is Bagu reusable bags. I don't have any of these, but I want them really bad. Their general reusable bag size goes for $14. There is a Bagu reusable bag for everyone. So if you know your friend doesn't have one, I would get them one because I don't know one person that wouldn't want a reusable Bagu, but that's just me. Moving on to the next section, I'm gonna be talking about plushies. You will know if your artist friend is a plushie person or not. It's very obvious, and if you don't, you should find out. The first plushie brand I will 
suggest is Jelly Cats. I have this one. He's great. Do I have to say anything else really? There is one jelly cat that I really want. It's a frog. He looks like this. It's just simply immaculate. It's so good. And jelly cats typically tend to range from like, I'd say like 15 to like $30. Or like, they're, they're pretty expensive, but uh, you know. The next plushie brand I will suggest are Squishmallows. I love Squishmallows. I will say be careful where you buy Squishmallows from because I looked up Squishmallow Mushroom and an 8 inch Mushroom Squishmallow goes for like $40 on Amazon whereas a few years ago my boyfriend found this one for like $20 at a Walgreens so you really have to pick and choose where you find these guys or else you might just be paying way too much for them. So that concludes the plushie section and now we're moving on to the water bottle section. I think every artist should have a water bottle because so often I will sit for a whole day and just work and have this horrible headache and I'm like, why does my head hurt? And then I'm like, oh wait, you didn't drink any water today. So having a water bottle around is just a nice friendly reminder. It's also a really nice place to put stickers if you like stickers. The first water bottle I have suggested is a Hydro Flask. These are expensive, they go between $40 and $50, but they're a really good investment because a reusable water bottle, if you take care of it, should last you for the rest of your life. If you're looking for a more wallet-friendly water bottle brand, I would go with these Nalgene water bottles. I've had this one since college, I've had it for like five years. It's still working great. Go for about $13, and I know people tend to stay away from the wide mouth because it spills. However, this water bottle pairs really nicely with this, uh, they have these sippy tops that go along with them that are about $9, so you can sip from it and it won't spill all over you, and it's really nice. So that concludes the water bottle section. And now I'm going to be moving on to the gift card section. I know gift cards, can seem kind of like a heartless gift, but I personally get really happy whenever I get a Michaels gift card. So speaking of Michaels gift cards, I would get an artist a Michaels gift card, a Blick gift card, or any local art store that you know is near them. I like gift cards because it just means that I can get more things that can help me create more. Another cool gift card idea is the website Sticker App. Sticker App is a website where artists can upload their art and make it into stickers. Their gift card prices start at 30 and then go up from there. I think this is a really nice gift card for any artist, especially if you know one who's wanted to make their art into a sticker. It's a really thoughtful gift. Moving on from stickers, I'm going to be talking about ceramics. So I know ceramics can seem kind of random. I included ceramics because I personally really like them a lot. I can't guarantee every artist will, but most of the artists I meet tend to have an appreciation for handmade things. First ceramic item I have listed is a ceramic mug, a handmade ceramic mug, and you can find these on Etsy. I linked this really cute one below. It's a little monster and the rim is like the monster's mouth. It's really cute. And I also think these are cool gifts because they can have a multi-purpose, you know? Like I got this ceramic mug, that's two of my favorite colors. I love pink and blue but instead of using it to drink, I used it as a pencil cup. If someone didn't feel like drinking from it, then they have a really cute pencil cup for their desk. The second item I have on this list is a ceramic planter. I think ceramic planters are absolutely beautiful. Ceramic planters tend to range from like 30 to $40. I've seen some cheap ones, but I don't think they were handmade. Also, you can see if there's any local ceramic artists around where you live, and that applies to all of these. I would really try to shop local if you can, and always try to support local businesses. That is all I have for the ceramics list, so moving on. Now is art organization supplies. So the first item I have is this uh, Japanese metal toolbox. I've seen it trending online, a lot of artists that I follow have been getting it. I know Studio Meggy got one to store all of her ceramics tools. 
I've seen people use them to store paint. But yeah, a toolbox is it's great. It's somewhere if someone has a bunch of paint tubes, they could store their paint tubes, or they could store loose papers. It's just a nice gift. The next item I have is one of these three tier rollers. I have one of these and I find it really useful. Art supplies tend to just naturally build up and there's not a lot of places to put them. Having one of these is nice. It's also nice that it has wheels so you can move it around if you don't always feel like it being next to your desk. In my experience, I found it really useful to have one of these. Something that I want that I don't have, it's from World Market. It's called the Thomas Galvanized Metal Cubby Wall Storage and it looks perfect for storing yarn because it's just like, I'll include a picture here, but if I were to store yarn in it, you could see everything. Right now I have all my yarn stored in a bin where I can't see what's on bottom, but having something like this, everything that you store is visible, which is really useful. Whether you're storing markers, you're storing paint, anything, I think it's a really cool gift for an artist. I've also seen people buy this and then spray paint it a color of their choice, so apparently it holds paint really well if you wanted to customize the color too. This whole section is a little bit pricier. The metal toolbox typically goes for about $45. The three tier roller typically goes for about $40. And the Thomas Galvanized Metal Cubby Wall Storage goes for about $90. So all of these are definitely an investment and a more expensive gift. That concludes our art organization section. And the next section I have is experiences for artists. So I'd say these are good gifts for people who are like, I don't really need anything. I'm a minimalist. I'd rather have an experience than get something. The first item I have on this, it's not sponsored, but it's getting someone a month subscription to Skillshare. Skillshare charges about $32, I think it's $32 a month, but if you have a friend who's wanted to learn something and hasn't gotten the chance, I think a Skillshare class would be a really nice gift. They could learn or dip their toes into something new that they've wanted to for a while. The next item on this list is taking your artist friend to a museum. I live local to New York, so a, an option for me would be taking someone to the MoMA. The MoMA Museum I think charges between $14 and $25 per ticket. So it's not too expensive and it's a nice experience for you and whoever you'd like to bring. The next item on this list might be kind of weird and uncommon, but it's a massage for your artist friend. I myself always have really sore shoulders because I'm always leaning over and drawing and hunching over. So I think a massage is a gift for an artist. Isn't typical, but it's really thoughtful and I think that they would like it. Massages typically range between $65 and $150, so this is a more expensive gift. That concludes our experiences for gift section, and moving on to the electronics section. I warn you, this is the most expensive section. So the first item I have listed are the Sony wireless headphones. These are the ones that I really want. They go for about $350. I think headphones are a really good gift for an artist. I like to sit with my headphones and I can just draw. I really like listening to music while I draw and I don't know any artist that doesn't. The next item I have listed is an iPad paired with an Apple Pencil. Um, last year I was lucky enough to get gifted an iPad with an Apple Pencil. It is such an amazing gift for an artist. I personally have seen my art grow immensely because I have the opportunity to use this and be able to grow and find my art style with this. The iPads typically range around 300 and the Apple Pencil. Apple Pencil typically ranges around 100, 130, which can put you at 400, 430, so it's not a cheap gift, but it is an amazing gift for an artist. The next thing I have on this list can be paired with the iPad. It's an Apple gift card for like 10 or $15, so your artist can download the app Procreate. Procreate is an app for illustrators. It is what I use. Some people prefer Adobe Illustrator because it's vector-based, whereas Procreate is pixel-based. I personally prefer Procreate because it's really user-friendly. Um, it's really intuitive and it's just fun. 
The last item I have on this list is extremely expensive. I apologize. It's the Uline desk that lifts and lowers. It's about $735, yikes. Um, I think if you're a full-time artist, or if this is what you're working towards, or if you're someone who likes to sit and work at a desk a lot, it is worth the investment because I work at a desk a lot and I don't always want to be sitting. So it's nice to be able to have a desk that can lift and lower depending on what task you're doing or what you're working on. As an artist specifically, it's a really cool item to have and it's really valuable and will help you in working. So that concludes my 2022 artist gift guide. I hope it was helpful. Like I said in the beginning, these are all things that I either have and love or have done research on and want really badly. I hope it was helpful to you and good luck to all of you in shopping in the holiday season. I know it's not easy, so just be gentle with yourself. Thank you all for being here and sharing your time with me. I really appreciate it. If you liked hanging out with me, I have a few more videos up on my channel, so feel free to check those out. I hope you all have a good day, no matter where you are. Until next time, bye friends.